that's the question is, do we need to know how mantras work? Is that the yeah. question? Yeah. Uh, maybe. I think some people want to know these things. You know, so, some people ask questions, good questions in general. I don't, I don't subscribe to the fact that there are any bad questions. But I do think that there are people who tend to overemphasize knowledge uh, compared to their own personal experience. And in so doing, they get caught up in, let's call them facts, whether they are or not, but they get caught up in details and they could lose the forest for the trees. And that's, that's the, the dilemma here. So I like giving people a certain amount of information because I like to validate their interest. I like to also validate their curiosity. Mm. You know, I don't want to dismiss a question in general. That's, that's my philosophy. But I do want to help people go beyond the question to... Uh, and therefore, I think my role is to get people comfortable enough in a place where they can view the path themselves, that they feel self-sufficient from that point on, that they're not as reliant then on answers or a guru or something, that they actually can figure, see it for themselves so that there's less ambivalence. They may still value, just as an aside, a teacher. They may still value the mirror. They may still value people who challenge them but they're not as quite as dependent on that. Uh, I think people get further when they have their user own wherewithal. So mantra is interesting because it, it's, it's a really good question because people often want to know what the meaning of the words are, right? Mm -hmm. So that there are mantras and there are phrases and they actually can be translated. Most people understand that when you try to translate one language to another, you lose something anyway. But with mantra, what I've learned, which is very interesting, is that there are maybe literal translations, even if you were to understand Sanskrit uh, or a native language of any mantra, but that there's something about the vibrational frequency of the, of the words when they're articulated by a human being um, or exist in the natural world that is an electromagnetic vibration which has an effect specifically. And you know this in your own life. This is what I would say. So if, if mantra is better understood as an electromagnetic wave than literal words, uh, that's really important. Because then we know that when we're in some environments, for instance, when I go to a grocery store with overhead fluorescent lights that's, that are really bright and all these tall aisles with a lot of color and, and they're sort of walls that feel like they're coming in on me, I feel it. I hear it in my ears. I feel it in my body. I get anxious. Um, that's electromagnetic frequency that's affecting me. On the other hand, when I'm sitting by the ocean, listening to the waves and hearing seagulls above me and feeling the warm, salty air in my nostrils, uh, that's another electromagnetic field. And I feel completely different. And so do I need to explain what the actual frequency is of those different environments? No, I just know where I'd rather be. And so mantra, in a sense, is a vehicle um, because it carries us on an electromagnetic wave um, that transports us. Uh, and it can penetrate like electromagnetic waves can penetrate. So people know about radiation, as an example, and gamma radiation, which is the source of conventional x-rays. That can go right through your body. And it's not the wave is somewhat of a mass particle you know, according to quantum theory, but it actually can go through solid objects because it's got a specific frequency. Well, mantra is like that. Yeah. Uh, and mantra has a specific frequency. And so my teacher who taught me to meditate um, said something interesting. You know, the words are uh, only take you so far, meaning the little translation. If, if you were in locked up in a prison, as an example, and your friend came by um, and said, uh, I set you free. You would say thank you very much, but you would still be behind the prison door. Whereas if the prison guard came with the key and said, I set you free, there would be the same word, but there would be a completely different effect. And therefore, the effect of mantra is not just the literal translation, it's the impact of the source. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when people know what they're doing and they use the mantras from their heart, um, which is this 
love reservoir, which is the source, uh, then I think it has the effect. So that's how I would answer the question of, you know, you know what do we know about mantra? If, if you need science, then just understand it as an electromagnetic field. Um, most of us, I think, would prefer just a good experience, and that would be enough. <laughs>